biggest sources of the loss of moisture is concrete because it combines chemically. Nature doesn't do that, I'd say maybe on the slopes of a couple of volcanoes. But we do that en masse because we're free to do it. But we take the given, and because we have a kasha that can become all other consciousness, we have the ability to take what is manifest and to transform it. A transformation of what is manifest, what is given, is the alchemical tradition. What the rules are, I have to understand how it came into being given in the first place in order that when I transform it, I don't violate something. That's the big kicker. Because I can transform it however I wish. But if I transform it and I simply view it as a resource, I'm not responsible for the impacts that my actions make out of that transformation. It's just a manifestation. It's just a resource. And the alchemist understood that that resource has what Goethe called a becoming. It has an ontogeny coming from a consciousness of, be of creative beings. In the ancient world, nature was the result of creative beings. And we've lost sight of that when it's become just materials. So the greatest problem of materialism is that the natural world has lost its beinghood. So we, some of us are in love with indigenous cultures because they honor the beings of nature. So we say, go back to nature. But we've gone beyond nature. And there was a kind of egotism in nature. The Bushmen say, if I don't dance at the full moon, the moon's not coming back, that's the end of the world. So we would look, so if, I, if you said to somebody, oh, I gotta go to the dance tonight, because if I don't go to the dance, it's the end of the world. Like, well, who are you? <laughs> well, we look back at that and we revere that because Say, well, they're in touch with something. Yeah, they're in touch with being. So we need to be in touch with being, but as contemporary people who have the kiss of death of modern contemporary knowledge. So the alchemists understood that that kiss of death of knowledge was necessary in order for us to understand that we are purveyors of death. This is the gods must be crazy seen that movie. We, we are purveyors of death. And the reason is because we don't understand being. Right? So the alchemist said it's necessary for humans to understand that what is above in the realm of spirit is being. What is below in the realm of manifestation is an image of being. And I need to use the image of, the be of what is manifest as a kind of guide to the being. And the great challenge today to do that is that I and bombarded with images in which I can't get back to being. The purpose of um, you know, computer-generated images is that you can't get back to a being, unless it's a really big and nasty being <laughs> somewhere in the cosmos. He says, don't worry about images. It's all made up. So don't even try to get to the bottom of this. My son is an art director at Pixar. We have interesting 
conversations about image and being. Because it's a big issue. It's an issue even in Pixar. Because the young ones are saying, we have to tell stories that connect to the human soul. And Disney says, we have to tell stories that sell action figures. <laughs> and it's a problem, you could say, in the organization. The young ones are saying, hey, I'm just not here to sell toys. I'm, I'm here to serve humanity creatively. So it's everywhere, the issue of can I, in my consciousness, change my Akashic field to resonate with the level of being of the thing I wish to study? And how do I know that I do that? So the, the biodynamic preparations are based on those principles of finding in natural systems resonances, morphological harmonies between a mineral and an animal, a particular system in an animal and a particular um, process of becoming of a mineral. We get 501. Or a particular morphological structure of a plant and a sheath within the digestive organs of an animal, then we get chamomile prep or whatever. There's a line. So Rudolf Steiner's genius was to be able to find the, the morphological reality of the different becomings of the different systems of the digestive system of a cow, a mesentery, and what does that have to do with the dandelion? What, what does valerian have to do with anything? Valerian is always where, in the study group, the train jumps the rails. And goes, I don't know. <laughs> But, but there's a picture. Why? Because valerian is so unusual as an herb, it's either a stimulant or a depressant, depending upon dosage. So it's either this or that. So when you try to study it and pin it down, it's always becoming something else. But that's its function. That's why it's difficult to study. It's because everybody wants it just to be a factoid that they can remember, but it's always becoming something else. Okay, so these are pictures out of, we could say, the alchemical tradition. So this diagram is intended to have above and below be something that um, you can use as a meditative device and plug in any system into this diagram. Animal, plant, mineral. And if you if you work with this diagram meditatively, you can um, begin to uh, find very interesting offshoots of what Steiner brought to go in a direction of research that uh, opens up the bridge between food and medicine. There's, there's, there's a great bridge there, but it can't be built um, through pathology. It has to be built through meditative practice because you need to have, include the beings on the other side to come and help you understand what you don't know. So earth, water, air, fire is the fundamental. And earth to an alchemist means anything that is going into a process of manifestation. 
The diagram for that is this inverted triangle with a bar through the center. And Steiner gives a picture that the alchemical diagrams were not meant to be looked at, they were meant to be moved. So in the old days, if you had a teacher, they would have you carve that symbol in a piece of stone, a groove in it. And then you would have to run your finger through the groove and through the groove, and you'd have to trace that again until you kind of got the symbol in your life body. Once you got the symbol in your life body, you would be asked to take those movements into sleep. Once you took them into sleep, the movements in your life body would be transferred to your soul. And in sleep, your soul would go into the area where the movements were, and you would contact beings that stood behind the whole process of manifestation. And they would inform you about manifestation. They would say, this is kind of how this looks from where we are. And once you began to have the experience that you began to understand manifestation, your sense experience during the day would start to reflect up in you. You would see manifestation. It would uh, separate as a gestalt from a background of just stuff, and you would go, oh, wow, check that out. That's not you. That's you in combo with the being who is interested in you because you're interested in them. It's just being friends, you know? Across the threshold, the beings are waiting for humans to use their Akasha credit card to make some purchases. They're waiting for humans to use their imagination to enter into their realm. And their realm is made of energetic symbols. We call them dreams. So I can take into their realm of Akasha energetic, symbolic pictures that they don't have to interpret. They just go, oh, wow, cool, there's a human who like gets it. There's a human who understands how um, how the HTML code works from, you know, I go here and then I go to there and to the server and then go somewhere and it comes back. They understand how the devices shake hands. <coughs> the device is my consciousness of Akasha and their consciousness of Akasha. They are, we could call them a server. And I just need a search engine. This is a search engine. This diagram is a search engine of how to get access to an icon. So you can apply what they have to your life. That's like Uber app. <laughs> All the stuff we have here in technology is a shadow of this reality. It's a shadow that's been usurped. But the reality is you have the apparatus to do this, you just forgot that you had it. So earth consciousness is anything that comes out of uh, invisible, into visible. We call it manifestation. And then anything that manifests flows through a sequence, a pattern of what Goethe called the coming into its manifestation. The pattern of the coming is sequence